It's Thursday, December 11th, and here's some of the news beyond the headlines. The death of a Palestinian minister following a confrontation with Israeli forces has further escalated tensions in the occupied West Bank. Ziad Abu'ain was passing through an Israeli checkpoint with dozens of activists to plant olive trees at the site of an Israeli settlement near Ramallah. That's when witnesses say Israeli troops fired tear gas at the group. There are conflicting reports of what caused the 55-year-old's death, but this video shows an Israeli soldier grabbing him by the neck, leading some in the Palestinian government to call it an assassination. Chief Palestinian negotiator Sa'ib Arakat says Israel faces severe consequences over the incident. Two Saudi women jailed 10 days ago for violating the kingdom's female driving ban have been ordered to spend another 25 days behind bars. Lujain al-Hathloul and Maysa al-Amoudi were driving with valid driver's license from the United Arab Emirates when they were arrested at the Saudi border on December 1st. Activists have written an open letter to King Abdullah urging the release of the two women, who were taking part in an ongoing campaign to challenge the restrictions. Bangladesh is scrambling to clean up an oil spill that's threatening a marine sanctuary. On Tuesday, two cargo vessels crashed in the Sunderbunds Delta, causing one carrying more than 90,000 gallons of furnace oil to sink. The Delta is a UN World Heritage Site that's home to a number of rare and endangered plant and animal species, including the Arawadi dolphin. Four naval ships have been deployed with a chemical aimed at separating oil from water in the 25-mile stretch of the Sila River. Government officials have admitted they have little experience dealing with these types of disasters. Could laser weapons be the future of naval warfare? The U.S. military suggests ZAP combat is only a few years away. On Wednesday, the Navy announced it had flawlessly tested an experimental system in the Persian Gulf earlier this year. With the touch of a few buttons on a video game-like controller, the laser weapons can obliterate targets on small attack boats and blow drones out of the sky. Researchers say the lasers also cost far less to operate than traditional kinetic weapons such as missiles, which can run up to a few million dollars a pop. They hope to have combat-ready prototypes sometime in the next decade. Check out the Vice News YouTube channel for more original reporting and documentaries from around the world. I don't give a damn whether you worship, what god you worship. I don't care. But literally, when you want to kill my friends and you want to kill my family and you want to destroy my way of life, you've got my full attention. <laughs>